Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, we're gonna see our first example of integrating using the method of U substitution. Okay. In the last video, when I showed the notation of U substitution, I wanted to point out to you that the integrand here, which I have in parentheses, is gonna be some function's derivative maintaining the inside function originally as is, multiplied by that inside function's derivative, okay? So we actually do have that set up. And it, when you're first starting out on these problems, it's a little more difficult kind of to see sort of the setup and the pattern that emerges. So you sort of have to trust me on this, that we in fact have just a perfect type of example that is ripe for using U substitution to integrate. So here's what the process looks like. So what we would like to do is um, U substitution's name is because we want to redefine some expression as U, okay? So instead of having all of our X's here, we're gonna exchange them out for things that look like U or some version of. So I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna say, all right, let's pick a U and let's be strategic about this U, okay? We want to be so strategic about this that we actually want to pick the u that's the inside function itself. So if I look very carefully here, I notice I have some function e to the x squared. It's a composition function. I have a power of x squared. That's a whole nother function already. And that's been embedded, been inputted into an e to the x function. So here's my original composition function, and that's going to be multiplied by that 2x, which is the derivative of that power, believe it or not. Okay, so in light of that, let's let our u actually be the inside function, which is just our x squared. I'll give you some advice here. We tend to usually pick the U to be the inside function. Start there by default. Identify what that inside function is and run with it. Doesn't always work out to be that case, but here certainly it will. So I'm gonna let U, I'm redefining my X, in this case X squared, to be equal to U, and then I wanna find that derivative. So I wanna literally find what DU DX is. I wanna take the derivative of u, but with respect to x, because I have x's that are hanging out here. So in doing so, I go ahead and take the derivative of x squared, which is just 2x. Now we're gonna do some manipulation here. We see that over here we have a dx, so we're gonna be very clever here. We need to have stuff that actually has dx's next to it. Like, for example, I see I have a 2x here that matches the 2x in my integrand but I also needed to have the dx sitting over there. You'll see why in just a second. So what I'd like to do is take this equation, let's just go ahead and multiply both sides by the dx. I can do that. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I can do to the other. And they divide out, the dx's divide out on the left side, leaving me with a du equals 2x dx. And I'm gonna box that because this is gonna be important right here, okay? What this says is that allows us to go back up to the main problem that I have here. And everywhere I see a two times X times DX, I can exchange that out for the DU. So I see I have over here exactly that expression, a two X DX that's hanging out there. And I'm gonna exchange that out for a DU. Also, while I'm doing that, I have an E to the X squared, but we know that X squared we had redefined to be a u. So we'll exchange the power out for a u as well. So here we go, we're gonna go back up to the main problem and we're now gonna have the integral of e to the x squared times 2x dx. And right here we see again the 2x dx, that can be a du for that part. I still have to bring down my integral symbol here because I gotta deal with that in a second. And here, e to the x squared, I need everything. If I'm gonna exchange out the dx's and the other x's for u's, I gotta do it everywhere, including here. So instead of x squared, I'll have a u. So this will be e to the u times our du. So, so far now we have uh, integral of e to the u du. We have essentially rewritten our initial problem in terms of u's everywhere, okay? All right, at this point, we can now actually integrate e to the u. That's not a bad one to integrate because we remember, hopefully, that 
Well, gosh, the integral of say e to the u is exactly e to the u back again. We love exponentials for that reason. So here, so I have equals here, my next step, I literally am taking the integral of e to the u, which just happens to be e to the u. And of course, I don't have any boundaries on my integral symbol here. So I have to be consistent with saying, all right, let's add our constant. We don't know what it is, so we'll add c. But we're not ready to box and be done with our answer just yet because recall, we started out in, with a problem that had x's. We need to end our answer with an answer that has x's. So we're not yet done because we have to exchange back out again the u that I have here. Well, as a reminder, we know u is x squared. We made that happen. So let's put that back in here. So instead of u, put back in our x squared. So we have e to the x squared plus c. And now I'm ready to box this as my actual answer. A couple of things to point out here. The whole reason why we chose to do a u substitution is to make the actual integration much easier, easier for us to handle. Um, so by exchanging out all the x's for various versions of a u, this point right here where we could take the integral of e to the u was a much easier lift for us to be able to handle than it would have been had we started trying to figure out from the beginning what the integral of e to the x squared times dx would have been. So that's the whole purpose behind a u substitution to make that part a little, a little easier for us. But a couple things to be warned about. Again, if you don't have the boundaries on your integral, you need to make sure you add your constant C at the end. And also don't leave your final answer with U's in it. You still need to exchange back in your appropriate expression that involves your X's, okay? All right, so I hope you enjoyed this particular video. In the next video, we'll do yet another example of U substitution since it's a process that kind of needs some getting used to, if you will. Um, so please click on the Advantage logo at the end here to subscribe to our channel.